Greetings to all my YouTube viewers. Thanks for your subscription, reviews and comments. This video is going to be about invention of electronics. So in all my physics videos, I have not touched about electronics all these days. So when you talk about this electronics, first thing that I will ask everybody is that what if I am going to ask you a question, what is that you are going to do in the morning once you wake up? All of us will reply saying that we will see the mobile. The first thing you see after you open your eyes is the mobile. Either we check for the messages or for the timing or for the alarm, whatever may be. But can you ever imagine living without a mobile phone and a laptop? Never, never possible. So this electronic gadget has become a part and parcel of life. In fact, it is a life for many youth, for many teenagers, for many students. You can never dream about like leaving behind your mobile phone and traveling elsewhere. So such an important electronic device which is living amongst us and if you will be like so surprised if I say there is no mobile devices, there is no laptop, there is no computer without physics. So why I am saying like this because physics is the uh, mother of semiconductors. Physicists had given us the invention of semiconductors. From there only we are now able to enjoy the mobile phone because we have something called electronics inside it. So what is electronics? What is electricity? Electricity is all about the flow of current. And electronics is nothing but when you have a device which could control the flow of electron, that is electronics. So electricity means in elementary schools we have already studied that uh, electricity means a current flow where electrons flow from a higher potential region to a lower potential region or the other way flow of electrons it is like you know it is electricity. We always say there is a bookish example saying that static charges static charges are nothing but when you take a wet comb and brush your hair that wet comb will attract small small pieces of papers. So we call this as an example for static charges or when you take a glass rod and rub against a silk cloth or ebonite rod rub against a silk cloth it is nothing but static charges. So these are all like about charges but electronics is completely different where the semiconductors namely the novel materials for semiconductors means is germanium and silicon. These two are the I will say universal example for semiconductors. So without germanium and silicon today there is no electronics industry, no photonic industry. In fact, we have something called optoelectronics. You have various types of electronics these days which will not, wouldn't have been possible if there is no silicon and germanium. So thanks to physicists who have uh, identified these materials having a supreme nature called semiconductors. More than a conductor and an insulator, semiconductors are of, are of more useful. Conductor are materials which will conduct current fully. And uh, insulators are materials which will not conduct current. But semiconductors are materials which will conduct current partially. So you can make it very adaptive to our desires, to our needs. You can tune this material. That's why today electronics is like ruling the world. Today germanium and silicon being the major uh, integral part of electronics, we are uh, able to enjoy all the electronic gadgets because you have an integrated chip made up of alloys of silicon and germanium that we are enjoying the electronic gadgets. So this electronics field from where it came, it had actually derived from the after the discovery of electrons of course by J.J. Thompson in 1897 after the discovery of electrons only we started slowly with you know some devices which could con uh, control the movement of electrons. So the very first electronic device is called vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes can detect very small small electrical signals actually. So these vacuum tubes in those days it was supposed to be called as the first electronic device. And then we have the Lee D. Forrest actually he had he, he is the one person who takes the credit for making a triode. He had actually, you know, designed a triode. This triode is like something like it can detect very small uh, signals, electrical signals from radio waves. So this was the initial period of electronic devices. And of course, as the book examples and book uh, words says that after the Second World War in 1948, the John Bardeen and his team had invented something called the three-length component as transistors. 
so vacuum tubes and triodes are then replaced by transistors and the integrated chips what we see uh, you can take a mobile phone integrated chips the school students would have been like seeing in many circuits college students of course you will be seeing in an electronics laboratory so you can see everybody knows about this chip so in our days we never knew what is a chip all that we knew was like electronic device means transistor and logic gates microprocessors yes we have a integrated chip we never knew there will be something called chip in our mobile phone if you take your mobile phone now there is something called sock system on chip so the chip itself has become more 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 advanced these days we have sock in our mobile phones every mobile phone will have this motherboard where you have the uh, sock chip of different brands like a snapdragon and all others you have microtech and these are all different different brands so this is the significance of electronics so the gadgets we are handling in our hand let us try to understand the science behind this electronics that is nothing but semiconductors so this uh, after the transistors were invented people were able to incorporate these trans transistors in the scientific calculators that was the first usage in fact using the electronic components and today from calculators we have run to nano computers there are many types of electronics now those days we had only analog electronics digital electronics but now if you see micro electronics nano electronics quantum electronics and what not opto electronics means you know study of optics light as well as electronics so such vast electronics field is actually a boon for us to know more on this thank you for watching this video and please subscribe and give your likes comments and shares thank you all